James, thank you so much for joining us here at Fun Forum International. We're here today seeing a whole summit dedicated to ETFs. What does that say to you about their prominence now? Well, I, th I think it says that ETFs have a natural home within the European funds industry. I think the traditional buyer of, of mutual funds is now uh, a prominent buyer of ETFs as well. So I think it's right that at the biggest industry conference we have in Europe, that ETFs are represented, uh, not just represented alongside funds, but also having their own uh, summit, full day summit uh, to, to kick the conference off. Where are ETFs, you know, what's their reputation at at the moment, if you like? Um, I think we're in a pretty good place. I think we've, we've come from a place of a lot of misunderstandings. I still think there's a lot of investor education to go. Um, we're still seeing headlines related to liquidity or, or other issues, uh, when the reality is what we're seeing actually sometimes is issues with uh, traditional mutual funds on liquidity rather than ETFs themselves. Um, I still think there's a huge gap in investor education for ETFs, not just uh, how investors should use them, how they should think about them, um, but on some of the structural aspects that make ETFs different. So for example, this idea of a secondary market as opposed to just a primary market and being able to transact ETFs. What are the benefits of ETFs for people? What do they need to know? Well, so I think ETFs can bring a lot of benefits to different portfolios and it depends who you are and how you're constructing the portfolios. Um, you know, I think transparency has got to be forefront uh, of the benefits for me. Um, ETFs provide transparency at all times on, the, on their daily holdings. Um, that allows businesses such as us to have a lot more confidence in exactly what we're investing in, to model our risk uh, with a greater degree of accuracy on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think ETFs, ETFs offer choice. Um, you know, we're at nearly 2,000 ETFs listed on the, the London Stock Exchange. Um, there is uh, a, a choice of index exposure for everybody. Um, when we look at US equities, it isn't just a simple approach of tracking the market by following the the S&P 500. There are lots of different ways that we can access different themes or different factors through ETFs. Um, and often at times we can do it with a lot of efficiency and a lot of cost savings as well. You introduced that tracking word there. People have talked about ETFs as being sort of too passive and not giving those returns. What would you yeah. say to them? Um, I think the the thing about ETFs is they are probably best brought to life in a, an active asset allocation process. Um, much like uh, you know, passive trackers, the, the reason that retail investors have often struggled to use them uh, is that often you need to have an active asset allocation overlay. Um, I still think that's true of ETFs. I think to use the, you know, that, that breadth of products, you're going to have to have uh, sort of a, an investment strategy and an asset allocation behind it. Um, but I think ETFs can offer uh, a really differentiated exposure to a lot of other uh, index style investments. So for example, in the UK, if I was going to access UK equities, um, UK equity ETFs, if you're buying them on the secondary market, don't attract stamp duty. So that's 50 basis points straight off the bat on UK equities that you're going to save. That's a big friction cost for uh, a mutual fund tracker, an index tracker, uh, or in fact an active manager in UK equities. So it's understanding, I think, some of the benefits that ETFs can bring to a, a portfolio management process. There's been a lot of talk about tech in this industry and, and the introduction of, of new platforms and making this industry more accessible to people. It's what they expect in other areas of their life. Uh, how yep. is that developing and how can ETFs fit into that picture in terms of you know, access for people? Yeah, so I think we've seen sort of uh, two things happen. One is uh, increasingly, I think, data on, on active performance has become available to a wider range of investors and some of that um, has been somewhat unencouraging. Uh, I think the second aspect that we're seeing is that investors are going back to basics with, with that in mind, focusing on asset allocation that we know drives the bulk of an investor's portfolios, returns, um, and ETFs really are an asset allocator's toolbox. As I said, that choice, that transparency, the low cost, uh, the availability of them to investors across Europe means that actually if, if there's an asset or a, or a type of factor that you want to buy, there's probably an ETF for it, and it's probably quite an efficient way of gaining access to it. So. Um, that's really where I would see that sort of progressing. People could perhaps see it as a, a safer option if there is such a thing in this climate at the moment. Yeah, I wouldn't want to say safer, um, but what I would say is that what, what we've seen in, in, in the ETF market is a growth in asset allocation models that are focused around ETFs. Um, part of that has been driven by a more sort of tech savvy uh, digital uh, approach. Um, of which Nutmeg would probably be included in. Um, I think what we're trying to do is, is sort of democratize asset allocation, if you like. So for, for ordinary retail investors, for those investors who have, say, 500 pounds to invest, typically they're not going to have access to a, a high quality asset allocation product. Um, what we want to do is use ETFs to power that asset allocation product for them. You talk there about democratization. One word that pops up with investors that are a bit wary is fees. What would you say about that in terms of ETFs in this area? So I think there probably hasn't been enough 
focus on fees in, in the past from investors. Um, at Nutmeg, we see fees as the, as the number one way that we can improve an outcome. So if we can reduce somebody's fee, um, structurally we are going to improve that outcome and actually with uh, compounding uh, over time, you materially uh, improve the outcome by reducing fees by only a small amount. So um, ETFs have a large part to play in it. Um, I think you still require the, the asset allocation strategy behind the ETFs to really utilize them uh, to their maximum degree. Um, but clearly much lower costs coming from structures like ETFs um, are, are providing less of a drag on performance and that compounded over time is uh, resulting in materially better client outcomes. You're taking part in the event today. What do you hope to impart to the audience and, and indeed what do you hope to glean while you're here? Um, so I think for me, what I'd like to glean, a little bit more information on ESG, how, how others are approaching ESG manager selection, what can we learn from the active uh, fund selectors in the passive world about how we should approach uh, ESG in, in, a, in a passive fund selection. So James, there are two summits running alongside each other here. There's the ETFs uh, one and then there's the ESG one and that's something you're interested in both parts of. It's integral to what you do. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, you know, what am I looking to get out of uh, both of them running alongside? Well, actually for us, it gives us a, a brilliant ability to, to hear from active fund managers on the ESG side, uh, to hear from other fund selectors on ESG, uh, to understand maybe how some of the active uh, fund selectors are approaching ESG and, and what lessons we can learn there uh, from a passive perspective. So that's what you're going to glean. What do you hope to impart while you're here? Um, I think if I could give uh, the attendees one thing to think about when they go away, um, is to think about what the unique structural benefits of an ETF can be. Why, why would having a secondary market in fund products uh, improve an investor's outcome? What are the sort of structural costs that it can take out of a market? Um, and why could that be beneficial and, and potentially uh, going forward thinking about active ETFs? Thanks so much for joining us. It's been great to hear You're from welcome. you. Thank Thanks. you.